Hello, this is Hormoz Shariat with Iran Alive Ministries. Today I have the honor of having Joel Rosenberg, the best-selling author, with me, an expert in the Middle East and the prophecies about the Middle East. Thank you, Joel, for being with us. Oh, it's great to be here, Hormoz. Thank you. Joel, uh, I want you to briefly share why now, why Middle East is so important. Well, you know, it's interesting that uh, God decided in his sovereignty to choose the people of the Middle East uh, to send the prophets, to write the Bible, to send the Messiah. And then we know, of course, that the Lord Jesus Christ is coming back again to the Middle East, to Jerusalem, uh, to reign uh, for a thousand years. So, you know, God could have done that in Asia or in Latin America or in the United States or wherever, but he chose the people of the Middle East to reveal himself first. And uh, so it's not surprising that as we get closer to the second coming of Christ, though we don't know exactly when that is, the Bible says, more and more attention will be turned to the Middle East because more and more key prophetic events will be happening there. Yes, and as a key country in the Middle East, we hear a lot is Iran. Uh, what do you think the significance of Iran and what's happening politically, spiritually in Iran? What's your assessment? Yeah. Well, first, it, it, the most important thing I, I just think it's important to say, especially as a Jewish person, is God loves the people of Iran. You know, it's true that Iran's government is an enemy it's an enemy of Israel, it's an enemy of the United States, I think it's an enemy of freedom, uh, but it's also true that God loves the people of Iran. And it's amazing how much happens in the Bible that's connected to Iran. Um, you know, of course, the prophet Daniel uh, lived in Iran. Obviously, he was taken first to the Babylonian kingdom, but he prophesied that the uh, media Persian kingdom would take over Babylon. And in fact, he became an advisor to uh, leaders in Iran. Uh, queen Esther and, and Mordechai uh, lived in Iran. She was the queen of Persia. Um, it was Cyrus who was described by the prophet Isaiah, named hundreds of years before he was born, who would become the king that would rise in Persia and then set the Jewish people free to go back to Israel and in fact rebuild the city of Jerusalem. And it's one of the few times that not only does prophecy say someone will arise to do something, but it names the very name of that person, of course, that being Cyrus. And as you've mentioned, there are prophecies, uh, not only have great things happened in Iran in the past, and some bad things too, but the Bible says that prophecies will come true in the future, in the last days, about wars and judgments of Iran particularly its government, but also God doing something spiritually dramatic um, in that country and even says in Jeremiah 49, he will move his throne there. Now that's a, that's a fascinating concept because we know physically he's going to set up his throne in Jerusalem. So the only way to interpret that is that he means spiritually there's going to be a season where Jesus essentially reigns over the earth from Iran. And as you and I have talked over the years, we look at those prophecies, and I believe, as you do, that not only is God winning Iranians into, the, into Christ's kingdom now, but that they, are, they like you, are, are becoming great evangelists and disciple makers and Bible teachers. And I think that's going to accelerate as we get closer to the return of Christ. And I, it's amazing to me. And I'm I have to say, as a Jewish person, I'm a little jealous <laughs> because more Iranians are coming to faith in Christ in well, recent years than, yeah, and, and, than, than, than Jews. <laughs> but you're right, the, the Jews are getting jealous that, yeah. are, that Gentiles, and particularly Iranians, yeah. are coming to faith faster. Yeah. We know the Spirit will move powerfully on Israel, and it is, but, it will, but it not as powerful yet as it is in Iran. So it's encouraging to see what God is doing there. Yes, we hear uh, so many news from Iran and it brings confusion to people. Mm -hmm. On the one hand, they hear Iran wants to wipe Israel off the map, it's, uh, it wants to destroy it. At the same time, sometimes they hear there is a revival going on or Iranians love Jesus or love, <laughs> um, uh, love even America. So how do you assess that spiritual and political yeah. uh, happening in, in Iran? Well, there was a tremendous uh, yeah. a political revolution in Iran, as you know, you were part of it, um, in 1979, where people were so upset with uh, the Shah of Iran then 
a more secular leader. And they overthrew him with the Ayatollah Khomeini. And you were one of the people uh, shouting on the streets of uh, Tehran, death to America. And then I, I know that you went through a great transformation because you said, well, maybe not death to America quite yet. I'd like to go to graduate school over <laughs> there. And you and your wife came here. And this is where you came to faith in Christ. Well, like, I mean, in some ways, you're a microcosm of the story. People were excited about the Islamic revolution, the Shia Islamic revolution that Khomeini brought. But then a whole series of things happened, and some became disillusioned with Khomeini and Islam early. Others, it took a while, but now, you know, we're more than 40 years later, and what, where we are is, real, or, you know, four decades later, and we're realizing, Iranians are realizing, this is not bringing the peace and the hope and the security that we had hoped, and they're looking for something else. And I... I think that is, you know, you've described it, I mean, better than I ever could because you've lived it. There, God is creating the, the, the perfect storm of, or he's allowing, let's say, I think Satan is trying to destroy Iran, but God is allowing bad things to happen inside Iran to help people realize that if you follow Islam, bad things are going to happen in your life. And so they're now beginning to search. And many people are leaving Islam who are Iranians, and, and many of them, not all, but many of them are, are searching for more and they're searching for Christ. And when they turn on satellite television and they're watching state-run television, state-run television, state-run television, soccer, you know, state-run television, state-run television, <laughs> Western entertainment with all kinds of, you know, terrible things. And then, then they come across your network and they're like, wait a minute, what did they say? That guy speaking Farsi. He's talking about Jesus. What is going on there? And everyone's like, hey, hey back up. I want to see that. And I think that's fascinating. Wonderful. Um, you know about our ministry pretty well, and I appreciate that. Um, what do you think about Iran Alive? Uh, what do you think our role is? Of course, we are not alone. There are many ministries working in Iran. How do you see we are effective, or what is our role yeah. in transforming Iran? Well, the challenge is, of course, is that there are some you know, 80 million Iranians who are, are, are trapped. Uh, they are trapped in a country that is being... Uh, where radical Islam, not just Islam, but radical Shia Islam is being forced on them. And not just that, but a, a, an end times version of Islam uh, where people are waiting supposedly for this 12th Imam, this Mahdi who will come and set them free. But they're realizing this isn't true and, it, and, it's, and they're looking for something else. The problem that Christendom has is what do we do about it? How do we help? And I think what God has given you is a sense of how to get over the heads of the government, over the heads of the mullahs and the ayatollahs, and basically go around them and say, I know you won't let Christians come in and preach and teach in the stadiums like a Billy Graham would, or on the streets, or, or even in the churches, but they, they cannot stop the surge of uh, satellite television. And so God has you know, given you and Iran Alive Ministries a unique opportunity to beam the gospel and the teaching of God's word over, over the, the obstacles into people's homes where, uh, I, I, I'm just fascinated with this, because people can just watch in the privacy of their own home by themselves or perhaps with their family and friends. No one else is looking. They're not going into a church. They, they, no one would arrest them in a church. They're just sitting in their living room and you're sitting with them. And in some senses, again, I know you don't see the people of Iran as your enemies, um, but, but Islam is the enemy of the gospel. And I think of Psalm 23. Even when I was on your program, uh, you were interviewing me about my testimony, and there I am sitting in people's living rooms with them in Iran. Now, as a Jewish guy who believes in <laughs> Jesus, American citizen with a love for Israel and work for Israeli leaders, that's not normal. But I was thinking of Psalm 23, where, uh, where the Lord says, or David writes, that you know, he prepares a table for me in the presence of my enemies. Yes. And I think what Iran alive does, I think God has prepared a table for you in the presence of Christ's enemies. And he's allowing you to sit with people. You were Muslim, you were Shia, you are Iranian, you've gone on this journey. And now you have an opportunity to tell people um, the truth about God's love for them. And I think that Iran Alive Ministries is doing one of the most important works um, in our time because we know terrible judgments are coming 
to the government of Iran, and therefore some of the people of Iran will suffer. We also know that God is going to bring a great salvation there, and we can see that God is already doing a great work of salvation in Iran, but it takes an enormous effort to plant seeds of the gospel and to teach people who've come to Christ and have no other way to go to a church and get training. And uh, I love the fact that you guys are doing that. I appreciate that. You know, our vision statement says transforming Iran into a Christian nation in this generation. Mm -hmm. Now, how realistic it is, how, how biblical it is. What, what do you think about that mission yeah. statement? Is it too big? <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty big. Um, <laughs> look, um, ultimately, I believe that God said in Jeremiah 49, yeah. in those prophecies, that, that he is going to set his yeah. throne in the country we now know as Iran. And if that's true, and it is, then while we don't know exactly when it will happen or exa exactly how it will happen, we know that it will be a spiritually transformed country. Jesus can't set his throne in a country and not change it. He's going to change it, and he is changing Iran. And it's interesting, Jesus could have said he was going to put his throne in other countries, but he doesn't say that. Only Israel and Iran. Is it ever said that he's going to set his throne there? So I think it's doable. Uh, not because you've just, you know, you and your team have said, oh, let's just hope that this will happen. Jesus said it's going to happen. And while we don't know exactly how, uh, it's hard to imagine another way that it could happen currently than using the, the miracle of satellite television technology to beam the gospel into people's living rooms so that they can consider the claims of Christ and the teachings of the scriptures in a way that you know, they wouldn't have any other way to do that. Yes. I appreciate that. Well, uh, you have been such an encouragement and such a support in multiple ways to our ministry and to me personally, and I, I really appreciate that. Thank you. And many others also have joined us. Um, why do you support us? <laughs> and why should others do the same? Well, I, you know, first of all, I love you, brother, and I, I, yeah. I love the, what God has done in your heart. You know, um, you know, for me as a Jewish person who's come to faith in Jesus and looks at the scriptures and says, okay, terrible things are going to happen, judgments in the Middle East, including Iran. I don't want to stand before Jesus one day and have him say, Joel, I know you wrote books about it. I know you taught about it. I know you preached about it. But why exactly didn't you do anything? to try to tell the people of Iran to come to faith. Why didn't you, you know, and I would have said, well, you know, I, you know, I don't speak Farsi. I, I, I would be arrested. I, I would have my head chopped off. And there's a lot of reasons. But when I met you, I began to realize God is doing something different. He's doing something that I wouldn't have imagined in my lifetime, which is drawing my enemy into his kingdom and then using people to, Iranians, to beam the gospel back. Um, from safety into the privacy of their own living rooms. And so as I got to know you and your testimony and your family and your team, look, I was just, I was just moved. And I realized that I have something that I can help you with. I can help other people learn about this ministry and encourage them to learn about what you're doing, pray for what you're doing, give financially to what you're doing, and then go tell other people about what Iran Alive Ministries is doing. And while I can't go into Iran, and actually you can't either, but I can uh, do something that God has given me, that asset, if you will, which is to connect and communicate with people, Christians, and help them learn about what you're doing, why you're doing, and why it matters. And so, you know, as much as I can do that, I want to, because I want to walk down the streets of Iran with you one day when it's liberated. If it's liberated in our lifetime, I want to go with you. I want to see the country that you grew up in. Yeah. I want to see it come to Christ. And, I, and if we don't get to do that in our lifetime, then I want to walk down the streets of glory with you, brother, yeah. and meet oh, all these Iranians who would never have heard the gospel otherwise if it wasn't through this ministry. Amen. Amen. Well, I love your heart Amen. for the nations, and <laughs> that's just a piece of God's heart in you, and, that, and I'm encouraged by, by, and inspired by you, mm. Joel. Thank you. Um, I'm, 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 I'm speechless by mm -hmm. your emotions and your love. Mm -hmm. it's, just, it's just melting me. Um, now, there are people who are considering joining us on television, praying for us, supporting us. Mm -hmm. Would you do me a favor and uh, encourage them? 
Uh, maybe personally, yeah. if you would uh, talk to them to pray for us, yeah. to ask God what, how he leads them to, to join us in different ways. And I would appreciate it if you do that. Sure, I'd yeah. be honored. Uh, well, I appreciate you watching this video and learning a little bit more than perhaps you'd already known about this ministry, about Iran Alive Ministries and uh, who Hormoz Shariat is. You know, I call him the Billy Graham of Iran because Billy Graham, at the in the season of life where God had raised him up, got to go to the stadiums of the world and preach to tens of thousands, 40, 50, 60, 70 thousands. I met Billy Graham. I was at the, you know, the Carrier Dome Stadium at Syracuse University when I was in college. And I invited my friends to come and hear him preach the gospel. But the people of Iran, they don't have stadiums where they're free to invite a preacher to preach the gospel. And, and, and they would never hear the gospel unless somebody was preaching it uh, through satellite television. Radio, yes. The internet, yes. But those are limited by the ability for Iranians to, to tune into radio. A lot of it's jammed. Uh, uh, internet, a lot of the, the, really cr the Christian uh, internet uh, sites are, are banned and blocked. So this is, a, this is a critical tool that God has created uniquely in our generation. When, when, when Hormoz and I were born, there wasn't satellite television. So now there is. Now it's possible to reach people in the privacy of their own homes if they're looking for it. But honestly, even if they're not, if they're just sitting there at night bored and looking through uh, the, the, the satellite channels, looking for something, you've done it. You sat in your living room, flipped through cable or satellite, looking for something interesting. And suddenly they hear Hormoz or one of the, his colleagues or one of the pro, uh, preachers that are, and teachers that are on his network. And they hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. And they're like, what in the world are they talking about? Some of them are hostile when they hear it. But some of them are moved deeply. And I have been on television with him when people have called in live from Iran and prayed to receive Christ uh, on, live on the air. And so I want to encourage you, to, first of all, most importantly, to pray for Hormoz, for his team that he, God has raised up, and for the ministry of Iran Alive. This is a strategic ministry at a critical moment, knowing that we are heading towards very dangerous times, possibly a major war uh, that involves Iran. So this is a moment to pray. Yes, pray for peace, but pray that the Prince of Peace, Jesus Christ, be revealed to the people of Iran. But I would also ask you to, to prayerfully consider financially investing significantly in this ministry. Now you say, Joel, why aren't you talking about the Joshua Fund or your ministry? Because part of our ministry is to help other ministries. Part of our ministry, part of my calling is to help people understand that we're not the only people that are doing the work of the kingdom. There are others and they need your prayers and they need your financial support. So I would encourage you to uh, financially invest in this ministry. Uh, it's, it's unique. Uh, it is significant. It is fruitful. Um, and I, I just, you know, I'm personally moved by it. And, uh, and you've heard in this discussion a little bit of how we've gotten involved over the years. And I just think that there is a moment where you and I, as followers of Jesus Christ, we're going to stand before Jesus one day. And what we want to hear him say is, well done, my good and faithful servant. You were faithful in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Now, I don't believe that you have to invest in the Joshua Fund or Iran Alive Ministries to go to heaven. No, it's a free, salvation is a free gift that Christ gives us. But once we've received Christ, then the question becomes, what are we going to do with this great salvation? Are we going to tell other people about it? Jesus told us in the Great Commission to go and make disciples of all nations. And yet, how do we reach a nation that is an American enemy, is an Israeli enemy, the nation of Iran? This is a way. It's an effective way. And it's a unique way in our time. So would you prayerfully consider uh, doing that to invest in this ministry? And one day you'll be walking down the streets of heaven. And I believe that you will meet people who are Shia Muslims, who are lost and who are scared and who are confused and were searching. They were looking for love in all the wrong places. And then they met 
Jesus Christ. They heard the gospel. They heard the word of God, the power of God's word. And they heard it in the privacy of their own home on a television program through the ministry of Hormoz Sharia and Iran Alive Ministries. May God bless you as you pray for this ministry and financially support this ministry. And not just with a one-time gift, though that would be wonderful, but I would encourage you to give on a monthly basis and so that you are investing in the long-term work of the kingdom as God does something amazing and prophetic in the land of Iran. Well, thank you so much, Joel. I really appreciate mm -hmm. your love, your support, and we are going to continue to work together and bless Israel and, and its uh, enemies. Mm -hmm. And we love you. We love what you're doing, and we pray for you. Thank you. Thanks a lot for having the honor to, uh, to have you with us. God it bless. is a great joy. Yeah. Thank you, brother. Thank, thank you. you.